Hey, it's James from Mission, and today we're going to take a look to see if we can measure tone suck. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, we'll do a more detailed explanation at the end of the video, but just before we take the measurements here, let's do, do a quick review. Generally speaking, most people when they talk about tone suck are talking about a change in the frequency response when they add different devices into the signal chain, particularly cables and effects and buffers and other things. Now the main way in which this works is that as you add these um, components into the signal chain, you add capacitance, inductance and resistance, and those create a filtering effect um, that can change the frequency response of the device. So what we're going to do here is we're going to measure some different cables, and then we're going to plug them into a guitar and then we're going to measure the frequency response, and we'll have a look and we'll see what sort of effect that it has and then afterwards we'll talk about the details of why it is that we're seeing those effects. Right, now one of the biggest, uh, biggest impacts you can have on this really is the size of the cable. So the longer the cable that you have, the more uh, resistance and capacitance that cable will have. Now you can mitigate that to some extent by the design of the cables, the materials that you use in the cables. Um, but generally speaking, the, the biggest impact is going to be the length. So let's, let's measure that real quick to see if that's true. So we'll measure both the resistance and the capacitance of some cables of different lengths and different materials and see what difference they have. Okay, let's start with this. This is our shortest cable. This is just a, a one foot cable, which obviously wouldn't be practical in most cases as a guitar cable, but we'll use it as a sort of control. So we're measuring the resistance tip to tip across here and you can see that we have about 118 milliohms resistance for that one foot cable. All right, let's try a different cable. This one is a 10 foot standard guitar cable. So we'll plug that in there. 263 milliohms for the 10 foot cable. Okay, so how could we, it's obviously gone up. Are there things we could do to mitigate that? Up to a point, sure. So let's try this cable. Um, this is one that has a, a larger core size. This has more copper in it. So even though that's the same length, that's now measuring uh, 174 milliohms. So we've managed to get the resistance down a little bit just by using a larger core. Okay, let's take that out. Then this one here is a um, 15 foot cable, so we would expect this to be more, but this uses um, silver or at least part silver conductors um, which has lower resistance so let's see how that so there we go so that's 220 um, even though this is a 15 foot cable the longer cable so again we've managed to get um, the resistance per foot down a little bit this is probably about as far as you could practically go with a guitar cable because you really don't want it um, with huge conductors like in a power cable for example because it's going to be too expensive and not flexible enough um, and then also of course using exotic material starts to get pretty expensive so this is a this silver cable is like a $250 cable so it's only so much you can do right okay so that's the state with resistance let's measure capacitance we'll use this uh, again the same one foot Vestronics patch cable as our control. Um, we'll measure its um, capacitance here and we're measuring here 61.6 picofarads. Okay, let's try the next one. 10 foot cable, so we've gone up quite a bit in length here. Um, we're 10 times the length and now we've gone up to uh, 280, just under 285 picofarads. So we've gone up quite a bit there in capacitance. All right, next let's try the 
cable with the larger conductor sides. Now that's 642 picofarads, so that's gone up quite a bit. You can see the difference in, um, in capacitance between cables, even of the same length, can be quite significant. That's primarily because of the, the manufacturing style of the cable and what's been used to, uh, what's been used to make it. Um, and so we can see that this one, even though it's um, good from a uh, resistance standpoint, the capacitance is actually quite high. Okay, now we'll try the silver cable. And bear in mind this is slightly longer, this is a 15 foot cable, so I would expect there to be some higher capacitance. So there we go, so this is uh, around 500, a little under 500 picofarads. Um, so even though this cable is longer, 15 foot cable, compared to the 10 foot cable, um, the capacitance is actually slightly lower, but it still is proportionately higher compared to a, compared to a 1 foot cable. So we can see the capacitance still goes up quite a bit. And again, even using some of the more exotic materials and higher priced cables, we can mitigate it to some extent, but you know our capacitance is still going up. Okay, so now we've, um, now we've committed the horrible sin of live guitar players everywhere, and we've chained together um, the, three of the, long, the three longer cables, um, and we've used little um, adapters and patch devices here to, to chain them together, which of course often we find ourselves doing when we're out on stage and, uh, and we need to figure something out to reach where we need to go. Um, so let's measure those. Now I'm just measuring tip to tip again, and now you can see we have 485 milliamps, so we have almost half an ohm of resistance there along the tips. Let's measure the capacitance. Okay, so there's the big one. Now we've, uh, we've gone up an order of magnitude. Now we're measuring um, 1.464 nanofarads, so almost one and a half nanofarads. So by adding all those lengths of cable, we've increased the, the resistance of the core a reasonable amount, but we've made a really substantial increase to the capacitance. Does that make a difference to the audio? Well, let's plug in a guitar and we'll do some signal analysis and we'll find out. Okay, so let's take a look at the frequency response. So this is what I did. I just um, just took a single coil electric guitar with, um, with an open E and then just repeatedly played the open E and averaged the frequency response out over those repeated playings so that we should get a fairly consistent result between the different configurations. And then I just did the same thing uh, with the different numbers of cables and we'll talk through those. So this is the first one. So this is just the guitar plugged in with the shortest cable that I could to, could plug in. I think this was a this was a six foot uh, six foot guitar cable. And we can see here this should be an open E. So this should be our um, this should be our central frequency. This should be 329 hertz. So there we go, 329.4 hertz. And then these are all my harmonics. And then this is up at the top end, so this is 5K. This is my kind of high frequency harmonics that I would expect to get from an open E. And then of course they start to tail off here. So well, this, is, this is good, this is what I would expect. Now the next one is I just, I used a longer cable. So this is um, I think a 15 foot cable. So let's take a look at that. So we can see it's pretty close, but we do start to see it tail off here. We can see how um, the filtering effect here, there's a, there's a little boost around here. It's actually slightly louder around here. And then uh, it starts to tail off here. Um, so that's exactly what we would expect to get with the filtering effect of that extra piece of cable. This is where the low pass filter, there's that little peak from the low pass filter and then it's starting to tail off. So let's take a look at the difference here maybe. So we'll measure this. So at 6.6 .6 kilohertz we have neg 60, neg 66 dBU with just the shorter cable and that's dropped to neg 76 dBU. So about 10 dBU difference there. All right, let's look at the next one. So with this one, um, 
this is our this is our cable configuration from hell. This is where I took all the cables and just chained them all together. And there you can see we've got a big drop. Um, let's turn this one off. Um, so this is our original signal here. So let's measure it at the fundamental. So there we have uh, 35 dBU, neg 35 dBU, and here we have neg 45 dBU. So we've got a 10 dBU drop there um, at the fundamental. Um, and then if we go here, uh, that's not even on my chart. So we're going to have to uh, move that up a little. There we go. So we look here, for instance, it's really tailed off quite significantly there. Um, so we measure here and here. So all, almost 20 dBU at that point. So it's really starting to um, really starting to drop off. So that's not a good situation, and that that would be cone suck. There you would really start to hear um, that loss of high frequency. Um, and also you'll note that the um, the overall signal level is also quite a lot lower. And I did hear this when I was recording it. It did sound quieter. So that um, that extra probably the extra resistance, um, we definitely got less signal level all around. So reduction in high frequencies lower signal level, that's the problem with chaining all those cables together. Okay, so what we what can we do to fix it? Well, you can use a shorter cable, we know that that works, but what if you can't use a shorter cable? What if you need a longer cable run? Well, there's a couple of things you can do here. You could use a wireless system, um, that, that would definitely get you around that. Now, of course, wireless systems have their own issues, um, but you should certainly look at that if you have uh, really long distances to go between your guitar and back to the amp or to your pedal board, if, um, if you're required to use really long cables to make it work, then that's one thing you can do is just switch to wireless. Another thing you can do though is you can use a buffer and we've measured that here. So I used a Mission VM Pro which is a buffered volume pedal and the advantage to using that is it has two um, it has two buffering levels, so it has a unity gain out and then it has um, a, a small gain out. So let me explain what that is. Let's turn off our original signal for now. So this is our worst case scenario. Now what I did here is I used the worst case scenario but between the guitar and I just used a short cable between the guitar and the VM Pro input, and then I ran the long cables um, after the VM Pro. So the guitar is now buffered from those long cables. And the first thing I did was with it in the Unity Gain output. So let's look at that. Okay, now we can see we've recovered um, a, a reasonable amount here. We've actually got a little louder um, on our, um, in our fundamental frequency not quite as loud as the um, as the original but certainly getting close um, and we've also restored a lot of that high frequency you can see here um, in these cases here and um, the high frequency is definitely recovering once we get up above 5k but what we can also do is we can use the VM Pro as well as to buffer the signal also to boost it a little bit and we did that here, so we can see now we've boosted the signal. Um, so now our fundamental is much closer to the original, in fact almost exactly the same. There we go. So our fundamental frequency now with the VM Pro with its small boost, even with those long cables, is now uh, exactly the same. There's no change at all and pretty much mostly the same across here. Now this is where um, we actually boosted them slightly so this is because the, the VM Pro is boosting the signal a little bit in this configuration. And so you can see our high frequencies are actually a little bit boosted over the, um, over the unbuffered signal. But if you don't like that, then you, can use, uh, then you can use this configuration. So we can see that compared to, uh, 
compared to this, which is the long cable run, but with no buffering, we definitely get an improvement. There's the long cable run with some buffering, and there's the long cable run with buffering and boost. So that definitely recovers the situation. So if you, uh, best thing to do, don't run long cables. If you have to run long cables, use a buffer.